What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Datadash and today is November 27th of 2023. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, we're not only going to do a broad macro analysis on Bitcoin and the altcoin market, but I want to spend some time to talk about what may very well be the biggest trap that a lot of people have fallen into and how there's going to be a potential major rotation of value in the crypto space from one sector to another if we do enter into a new bull market. We've got a lot to unpack here in today's video, so if you guys happen to enjoy it consider dropping a like it's one of the greatest ways you can support the channel and let's go ahead and kick things off now i want to spend some time again just to go briefly here through bitcoin no major updates since we last spoke guys we had a failed breakout back on the 24th an attempt to get above this line of resistance but we were not able to close above it and we're still playing in between this line of resistance at 38k and the ascending line of support this is going to give bulls the opportunity here to show up and try to prove that this cycle has some serious depth to it but with the fade on friday Friday, this is not a good looking sign here and we're gonna have to see whether or not probably over the next few days if people are going to be essentially able to support Bitcoin's price at around 36,500 likely sometime on Wednesday or Thursday outside of that as well total three still unable here to get past the red band here on the Lux algo indicator on the weekly time frame we are seeing it squeeze in here between this resistance along with that as well we've got the historic resistance that was prior support at around 400 to 425 billion dollars this is still playing out as a level that the bulls cannot get price above and as we continue to watch here on the shorter term time frame while we are seeing that we've got this green support band where buyers did come on back here on the 21st at this range here around 390 billion dollars we are still chopping sideways here similar to every single time it came in this range I think this is an imperative thing people need to be made aware of here. But this isn't really the trap I want to spend time to talk about today, guys, because you already probably know that I've shared my hesitation around us being in a quote unquote bull market with altcoins. I mean, just take a look here. Uh, the list has uh, only gotten even more ridiculous over time. We've now added a new funny name up here. We've got Terra Classic USD. So this was the, uh, you know, basically algorithmic stable coin that would be generated from the Luna token back in the 2021 bull run that went completely bust and crashed to practically zero. Well, this practically worthless token that holds no significant or real value is now the top leader here for the last 60 days. Congratulations, everyone. We've added a new market leader here, and it's an absolute scam token. And let's just put that next to the basket here of gas token and FTX token or FTT. Look, at the end of the day, guys, this is where everyone's attention is right now. These are our market leaders. It's the best we have to show here for the last two and a half years. Wow not a good look for the crypto industry. And we think that institutions are ready to buy our bags and get in the space. I would think again. Now, I'm going to be fair here. I, I, look, these are the top performers. And if you go below there, there are some other great performers out there over the last 60 days, such as Blur. This has been, again, Blur has been eating the lunch of OpenSea over the past couple of months uh, by having a focus on royalties. You've got legacy DeFi plays like ThorChain on board here in the market leaders, as well as some of those emerging layer one protocols. And no matter where you stand on them or not, Solana has been able to garner traction. Caspa as well has been getting a lot of traction as well. And we just go down the list and the quality is not terrible, but there's nothing extremely transformative or new and this is a really big thing i want to emphasize to you guys because when the numbers start moving up when people start seeing uh the numbers go up on their screen and they look at the top performers and they start fomoing in to really just these empty shells speculative plays here like gas token which is the utility token uh, or central gas token for the neo protocol I don't mean to be rude. We've covered NEO since back when it was ant shares, but it's not in the spotlight right now. Like, and there's no reason it should be up this much, right? A lot of people get focused on this and not to mention they get tunnel vision and focus on the best performance and think, oh my God, I'm missing out on these gains. I would have bought all these plays. Well, if you just really scroll down and you take a look below the top 10 performers, which let's be honest, the overwhelming majority of people were not buying and weren't positioned in at those absolute lows, you'll find that the percentage returns are still good. Some of them are up 30, 40, 50%, but a whole slew of altcoins here are well below a performance of 30% here, well below Bitcoin's performance over the last couple of weeks. So I don't think we should be feeling any high degree of FOMO, especially on these like really trashy plays that are supposedly our market leader plays right now. But I want to go ahead and talk about something else here that I think is really big. I want to spend some time to talk about a positive narrative here. 
why I think people right now have their focus in the wrong area and where we could potentially see some sizable returns over the next couple of months and years. I wanna take a little bit more of a positive spin. You guys know we usually are talking generally about the overall kind of macro viewpoint we see on crypto, but at the same time, could there be room for one narrative to shine? Is there one narrative that people are not focused on right now, or at least not giving the attention and valuation premium that I think it deserves? Absolutely. I think there's one really big narrative here. There's a couple different narratives that we're definitely watching. There's a dozen altcoin plays that I'm kind of keeping on my radar, I'm tracking for their price performance, etc. But there is one broad narrative that I think people are really missing the ball on. And that is Bitcoin related infrastructure. Now, I know this might sound kind of weird and many of you might be wondering, like, Nick, what is Bitcoin infrastructure, right? Anything related to Bitcoin that might be allowing for DeFi or NFTs, think the trend in ordinals, or basically being able to deploy smart contracts or useful applications around Bitcoin. Now, I understand the first thing a lot of people are going to say is, Nick, you can't do that on Bitcoin. Like maybe you can do with ordinals now, you can do inscriptions. And uh, I don't know, some of you might not have heard about ordinals yet, but just to clarify, uh, it's a new trend of technology within the actual Bitcoin core protocol where you can actually create essentially the equivalent of Bitcoin NFTs uh, and eventually potentially even the idea of creating tokens and different types of ecosystem projects like ERC20 tokens or other types of tokens on the Bitcoin network. That's been one of the big trends here. And one of the plays that's been leading forward in that is ordinals or ORDI. Okay, this has been one of the big plays here uh, that even still is only at a $400 million market capitalization here. And it's got a fully diluted market cap here. So there's no, uh, you know, essentially uh, no more tokens that can enter into circling supply over the long run. So this to me is one of the few plays that I'm really interested in here. And it's not just from a, you know, basic point here of, well, you know, basically the price is up, right? We've seen it come up from here from $3 to $28. It's cooling down and looks like it's going to be entering into our pocket of interest here for a full scale cup and handle. I love this technical build up here as a trader for one. But the second more important point here is the narrative is there. If BlackRock is the sole reason Bitcoin is going up now, if a Bitcoin ETF is the sole reason Bitcoin is going up and why the market is all excited for a potential bull market, then I want to invest in projects as close to Bitcoin as possible. And there's two big reasons for this. One, it's clearly and directly tied towards the success of Bitcoin, right? Irrespective of if, if these things really materialize value, there's a narrative there that gets me interested as a trader. There's something substantial there, something new. Ordinals are a new technology on Bitcoin. And along with this, well, plays like Stacks or STX, which has been around for a while, but allows for essentially a layer on top of the Bitcoin network to deploy smart contracts and to be able to build actionable DeFi apps that could utilize Bitcoin in unique and interesting ways, similar to how you can use ETH in DeFi applications, as well as stable coins and other types of tokens of value. That is point number one. But point number two is that I feel a lot of people are exposed to a lot of projects with bloated valuations that are gonna have their lunch eaten by new competitors focused on Bitcoin. I think the market is really not keeping in check and not factoring in the reality that Bitcoin could become this vortex of liquidity, that we're not gonna get some major alt season across the board, that a lot of the existing plays are going to bleed heavily in a period of time where Bitcoin does good. And the only altcoins or potential alternative plays in the market that are gonna do well and maybe outpace Bitcoin are those that allow you to use Bitcoin in unique ways. I understand Bitcoin as it's standalone technology has been relatively stagnant. The transaction volume is not very high, but anything that's around building layer twos or building programmable layers on top of Bitcoin that leans into the security and the liquidity available in the Bitcoin ecosystem, but allows for functionable applications is where my interest is. That is the only narrative I could tell you guys here. And I've looked real hard. I know some people think I'm just being bearish for the sake of it. I've looked across the board and I can't tell you guys of many sectors out there that I feel really have a better risk to reward profile here. However, if you guys want to see what kind of plays we're watching, not only in this trend and others, you guys can check out the Dash report down below in the description. 
before I dive into talking about some of the plays that I think are going to really get wrecked here uh, from this kind of potential wave of plays within Bitcoin. I just want to let you guys know we are this month going to be publishing an altcoin watch list for a potential long-term portfolio. We have not been making any altcoin recommendations for the last year, year and a half. We're getting to the point here where we're at least going out there and explaining which plays we're keeping an eye on. We don't plan to hold anything for the next three or five years, let alone even a year at this point. But it could be that if things start to kick off, we want to be prepared. That being realized, we're still in cash at the moment. And if you guys want to be there when we make those trades, when we DCA, when we find those major moves in the market, you guys can do so at the link in the description to the Dash report. But I want to go ahead and again bring your attention here towards the area that I think could get absolutely wrecked over the next few years. And I don't mean to be negative, I don't mean to bash you if you've got these positions, but I gotta be real with you guys. And that is none other than the slew of EVM chains like Binance Smart Chain, like Matic, and Avalanche. Now, I as much as the next guy believe that being EVM compatible can be quite valuable to some extent. Uh, having chains that can offer greater degrees of scalability yet do the same as Ethereum, have some degree of you know use case there. However, the problem is that they are one in many. Essentially, there are so many EVM chains at this point. And when I look at the three most valuable alternative EVM chains, Binance Smart Chain, Matic or Polygon, and Avalanche or AVAX, and I'm not just saying this from a fundamental perspective that they're lacking in total value locked in DeFi protocols, that they're lacking in stable coins being on-ramped into their ecosystems. I could point to the lack of developers building on their chains, but worse beyond all of those things, even beyond their declining network effect is the price trend. When you start building custom indexes like this one that takes the market cap between those three plays, you start to see a pretty grim picture. Consistent lower highs here, barely hanging by a thread here at the support around $50 billion, with many times coming down here towards 37 to 45 billion. And right now, yet again, hitting the resistance band here on Luxalgo on the weekly time frame, signaling that we likely have more pain to come as every single time we got above the 200 day we barely held above there and then we eventually fell right back down this is a huge category of the crypto ecosystem and it includes some plays we're not even talking about like arbitrum and optimism while they may have more positive growth trajectories like they're not losing as many developers uh, and maybe their tvl is a little bit stronger and maybe there's some more ecosystem development going on there there's no thing that protects them from being in the exact same position as these chains. Case in point, guys, they may use optimistic or ZK rollups, but just because they're using some hunky-dory new technology, it doesn't make their tokens valuable. And this is just alone, these three plays are $50 billion of value. There are a lot of people who have sizable positions to these plays, and I'm not just trying to bash on them because I have some vendetta against the projects or anything like that, or that I don't like you know, something about them. It's because of the fundamental reality that someone could do this with Bitcoin, stacks and other chains that are focused on the Bitcoin ecosystem could steal away a lot of attention and a lot of future users, and that's just gonna make the position for a lot of these altcoins much worse. If you really consider it here for the total market cap of these plays, you know, we can go ahead and actually build the formula here as we're going through the video. If we divide this by total three, we can see that these make up around 12% of the market. And when you consider Ethereum in that equation as well, which I don't think is entirely uh, gonna be well positioned if Bitcoin becomes the programmable currency and network where DeFi exists with the most sound money in the world, with the largest network effect of users and the biggest by market capitalization, that's going to be a huge potential risk, not for just EVM chains, but even for Ethereum. And this is why, again, I tell you guys constantly on this channel, why I, I beat it like a dead horse at the end of the day, that you can't just go off of the idea that, well, because ETH is sort of deflationary and you know, right now it's the biggest DeFi ecosystem. Therefore, let's just buy it and it's going to go to 5 or 10K. I really don't think that's the case, guys, if I'm being completely honest with you here. 
And you've got to watch these trends or you'll end up buying into losing plays in the market where you can end up losing significant amounts of money, but not only that, missing on the actual plays that end up trending well. This is a big thing that I see a lot of people fail on. You've got to be ahead of the curve on watching these trends. I, 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 as much as the next guy, I understand why some people might be skeptical buying into something after it's gone from, say, $3 to 20 But I have to tell you, you need to flip that mindset on your head. You need to look for good entry points on a discount. You don't want to buy at all-time highs. But you want to look for the plays that are making multiples because those are the plays that you know initially have done 5, 10x multiples. And they're going to go on to do a 100x multiple. They're the ones that are actually going to lead in the altcoin cycle. I'm not saying that is the case for ordinals. We don't know how far this is going to go. And ordinals as a technology don't excite me to some massive extent, but at least it's something new. At least it's something to show for. What what is new about BNB or Matic or Avalanche outside of, oh, they did some partnership with someone or, oh, there's uh, some new DeFi app that maybe sort of improves Uniswap or... It's just nothing. There's there's nothing to show for, guys, that really excites me from an investor perspective. I know there's a lot of great people who work in these chains, a lot of great people out there who might hold positions. So don't take it as me attacking your position. I'm just trying to look out for you as best as I can here, guys. I can't think of one significant reason. And it's the same I've said about Solana and even some of the alternative L1s out there. Like, what do they add to the table that's totally new and transformative? It has that even that 5 or 10% chance to be a really big deal. That's my criteria. I'm, I'm, it's very loose criteria, but still, so many cryptocurrencies don't meet it. I think that tells you a lot about the space right now. Uh, we can see here as well, I want to dive into the macro sphere uh, a little bit here because we've been talking a lot about the altcoin space. We shared our thoughts on what narrative could be big. You know, Bitcoin infrastructure, I think, could be a big talking point of this cycle. And again, if you guys want to see some of the other ones that we're watching, you guys can again check out the dashboard. We'll talk about more as time progresses, but we want to give a first glance towards some of our numbers in the dash report. I wanted to dive, though, into the macro sphere right now and talk a little bit about what's going on in equities because I think a lot of this relief we've been seeing in altcoins and in Bitcoin has been focusing on this idea that, again, we're going back to the good times, we're in a new bull market, soft landing is in play, the recession has been averted. And to be honest with you guys here, one thing that has definitely thrown me back, and what I guess I didn't anticipate for, is that we essentially have the Treasury continuing to stimulate financial markets right now. If we take a look at global liquidity, we can see that since back here in September, there's been a pretty much clear direct correlation from an increase in global liquidity of 23.8 trillion towards 24.99 trillion, so over a trillion dollars in new money being created, mainly stimulated by the Treasury General account. This is something that's separate from the Federal Reserve, but does have a stimulatory effect. This has been in direct correlation with the huge gap ups we saw in technology companies over the past few weeks, and along with that as well, and the altcoin rally. And it's no coincidence that this lines up with similar moves in the past in equities. The key point I want to drive here is that what we're seeing is a lot of people again getting into this idea that, hey, it's time to get on the rocket ship, put all of our chips on the table and get ready for a new bull market. But you're not getting the kind of liquidity injection that's going to sustain a full long term bull market. And along with that as well. I think it's important to keep in mind that as we've gone throughout time, these are the two critical points of resistance in the past. I'm interested to see what's going to happen here if we can really clear through $25 trillion, because if we can't, then it's likely pointing us in the direction we've been talking about this whole time, we haven't been losing sight of, and that is simply put that we are heading lower here towards a much lower range here for total liquidity, that we need to chop down on all of this, or if not a majority of this liquidity that was injected in 2020. It seems like a lot of us want to ignore that that's probably going to be needed in order to get inflation down, that excess money, the kind of cream on top of a decade of other prior stimulus that we already injected into financial markets. Like, I want you guys to keep that in mind. Pre-2008, we were down at $6 trillion in global money. We're now at $25 trillion. Do you think that we're going to be able to really maintain inflation below 2% the Fed's target at current rates. $25 trillion versus the $6 trillion we had back then. I don't think so. 
I'm not saying you need to go back down there. What we need to do is cut back enough to get rid of inflation. And it's clear we're not getting rid of it just yet. And it's clear that the stock market is only going in to a few key stocks. Well, even those few stocks, the Mag 7 or the Magnificent 7, they are starting to face some resistance here. We've seen Nvidia flatlining practically since back in July. Really keep it on pace on the sideways here. Trend since back in May of 2023, losing a lot of its steam. I think that you're easily going to have it come back here at a minimum down here towards the green support band. And we're going to see whether or not it can hold there. It's in alignment with the 200 day. This is the Lux Algo indicator. We can also see here as well Google flatlining since back really in August and still not really making a significant uptrend really since back here in June. Sure, it's pressing up slightly higher levels, but here we're facing bigger sell-offs and we're just slowly grinding up and facing resistance and wicking at the same exact range at around $140 per share. Amazon, what looks a little bit stronger here is facing again a pretty strong level of prior support two years of support back here in the past that has since then been resistance. I'm curious to see what's gonna drive investors to buy Amazon past that point. I don't know what it could be, maybe some new AI narrative, whatever. Either way, not looking too pretty here. And you can see here again, guys, just how powerful indicators like Lux Algo can be and really getting serious about finding buy the dip opportunities rather than chasing things. And outside of that as well, when knowing when potential short term or long term trends have reversed. As you guys have probably seen, we also used it for ordinals back here and along with that as well in tracking total three. If you guys would like to get access to it, you can get it off for 60% on the Cyber Monday sale down below in the link down below in the description. You guys only have around 19 hours to get your Luxile indicator at that discount. You can set it for an annualized basis and they also have a money back, 30 day money back guarantee if you guys wanna just give it a shot. But I definitely recommend you guys check it out in the link down below in the description. It's one of the few indicator suites that I personally use in my trading strategies. I do have some custom settings on it here. Uh, so again, if you guys ever want to see what settings I utilize, the big thing is that I use it on the weekly and monthly time frame for long-term trend reversals. Daily can be helpful sometimes uh, in short-term trading, but I really like it on those longer-term time frames. And outside of that as well, I basically get rid of a lot of the markers on the indicators. I like to use the trailing bands here. These have been really my helpful tool at spotting trend reversals, finding buy the dip opportunities, favorable risk reward setups to go long or short as well. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. But the next thing here that I wanna talk about is probably one of the few last optimistic things in the market is, is basically the two largest stocks, Microsoft and Apple, this continuous concentration into these two technology stocks. And no significant change in their financials here over the last year or two. I mean, Apple has basically been in the same exact position for the last three years, financially speaking, making about $100 billion every year. And look, that sounds really great, but Apple is a $3 trillion titan at this point. And the question is, how is Apple going to get to $200 billion so that Apple can, at its current P-E ratio, go from a $3 trillion valuation to $6 trillion, right? This is just for a 100% move. Like, and let's say like over the next five or 10 years, how can it do that, right? This is the big point I wanna talk about, guys. These two stocks, and, and just these past few weeks, since like October, pr pretty much the past month, uh, if you take a look at the combined market cap ad between Apple and Microsoft, what you will find is that they added around 850 to a trillion dollars in market capitalization. I think the more specific numbers are around 850, 900 billion. To put that in perspective, <laughs> it's more than a Bitcoin market capitalization added in less than a month by two companies. More than all the value of Bitcoin, more than all the value of all those altcoins you can think about, in a matter of just four weeks. I gotta tell you guys, if you study history, you will know that when there's heavy concentration like in the dot-com bubble or other prior bubbles in the past in a few select stocks that seem unbeatable, that are bringing in solid earnings, that are the previous high growth plays of the last decade, they start to stall. Those are not the plays you wanna buy into because they can only be so concentrated in markets for so long. People will only pay a 30 PE multiple on Microsoft and Apple for so long. 
before they finally start seeing the warning signs, they start getting back to reality and start paying, especially during a recession, lower PE multiples like 15. If Apple has no changes tomorrow, as we've highlighted here in our chart, if Apple changes nothing, they still bring in $100 billion and we go into a recession and that PE multiple contracts from 30 to 15, Apple shares will be right here. They'll be somewhere between 75 bucks to 95 bucks. What happens if Apple's earnings start to dip? They start to send signals that long term, Apple's not going to be the same confident play it was in the past, or that it's not going to be growing, right? Maybe Apple stays relevant for the next decade or two. I have no doubt that that could be the case. Apple's a titan, a titan of a company, right? Same with Microsoft. But it doesn't mean people are going to keep paying the same multiples. And that's the unfortunate reality so many people, I think, are not ready for here. Um, and I think, again, just we're, it's not where I'm interested in things. I don't care about making a 10 or 20% return in some of these plays on an annualized basis. I want to find the new wave of market leaders that are going to multiply 10, 20, 50, 100 fold over the next decade. Far outpacing the market. And I think just being passive in these large cap names is not going to get you anywhere near the same kind of results it did over the last 10 years. But we'll see. We'll have to see here, guys. Anyways, I've rambled on a good amount here. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, I hope that you would consider dropping a like. It's one of the greatest ways you can support the content we put out here. And again, if you guys are interested and checking out the Dash Report or Lux Algo. You can find the links down below in the description. Thank you guys as always for tuning in in today's video. I hope you enjoyed our discussions around the potential Bitcoin narrative as well as making sure that we're not improperly allocated to the altcoin market and not even chasing the big fang stocks that may seem like the defensive plays. They may very well be some of the worst performing plays as they were back in 2022 going into 2024. So we got a lot to unpack here in the next couple of videos over the next few days, guys. I'll see you here on Wednesday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stay safe, trade smart, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.